Okay, so what is architecture? Yeah, <laughs> I've been uh, avoiding you because uh, that's uh, I don't know, any kind of what is question you know is uh, nearly impossible to answer. You know, like what is a human being? You know, what is the earth? You know, what is the good? You know, these things. Uh, you know, they're inherently uh, meta questions. You know, that uh, lack the specificity of. Uh, practices and particular interests and so on, you know, uh, it seems like uh, uh, it, it has something to do with uh, maybe not so much buildings, uh, although that's a pretty big part of it. Uh, architecture, I think, uh, is primarily about um, individual responses to what is the world and, and uh, the decisions that uh, are put into how to then make a building or or other things that architects make. Uh, they're uh, driven by some proposition about uh, what might be possible in the world or what we would like to be possible in the world. You know, so uh, I, I think that is a good distinction that has traditionally been made that architecture is not mere construction. No, that's not mere building, as I said, but something more like uh, ideas embedded in it. Uh, there's intellection in it, but uh, but most of these ideas that then distinguish it from, say, mere building are ideas about uh, uh, about the world, you know, in a very deep sense. So uh, uh, it's not a thorough answer, you know, uh, but uh, yeah. I guess that's more or less what I think architecture is, is a proposition about the world. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so what can it do? Yeah. Uh, the thing I've been interested in most recently is uh, the problem of the concept of the real. Um, the thing I hate more than anything else in architecture is this uh, phrase, uh, that's not realistic. Yeah, and this is why uh, I do have a lot of interest in certain topics in philosophy because uh, it's in the philosophical tradition that uh, we've more or less uh, accepted the conclusion that uh, we really can't know the thing itself and can't know what things really are. You know, uh, I love to give the example to my students of, say, relationships between people. You know, I've known this person for a week. You know, it would be pretty arrogant to think uh, I know who they are. Uh, but then how long would it take? You know, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years? Uh, still, that person's probably capable of doing something that shocks you and you realize you have no idea who this person really is. Right? And, but it, it's kind of like this with pretty much everything, isn't it? Like... Uh, I've been to Innsbruck three times now. Uh, I've been in New York for 40 years. Uh, still in both uh, cities, uh, I'm constantly surprised. And there's still something else to see. And what this leads to is a question about uh, the accessibility of uh, the real for us. And in philosophy, it's more or less accepted uh, you know, thought that, you know, although we have experience and we have a kind of connection to appearances of things. Uh, we really um, don't have access to the kind of essence, you know. So the essence we know is there, but we have no access to it, you know. And so this phrase then, uh, to return to what I was saying before, uh, that's not realistic. It's really an aesthetic judgment. It's not really concrete, you know. Uh, we not, none of us really know what is possible, what can be real. And I think, like no other practice uh, in the human sphere, uh, it's architecture that profoundly affects what we think is the real. Like a new building will potentially utterly change what you think is possible in the world and that sense changes what can be real, perceived to be real. So I think uh, 
at its best, I think architecture has a kind of profound mission you know, in affecting uh, the real. You know. It does a lot of other things, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so how do you position yourself in the discipline? Yeah. It's a, a mutable thing, you know, interests change, and one gets better, I hope, and becomes more experienced with time. And um, I don't think I have a kind of unchanging position, you know, so never say never is uh, what we say. And, and uh, but uh, I guess uh, I can talk about the kind of trajectory I followed. Uh, one thing uh, that I was very uh, moved by uh, when I first entered architecture was how profoundly in the world uh, the architect is. Uh, it's, it's a practice dealing uh, with external experience and uh, it's not like a novelist or even a musician that kind of lives a kind of internal life, you know, but uh, it's very much about uh, being in the world, you know, and so uh, when I started architecture, I think um, paradoxically um, I was curious about nature uh, I'm, I'm not actually uh, a nature person. Uh, I don't go skiing. Uh, I don't like going into the woods. I find nature quite scary, actually. And, but uh, there's something uh, uh, about uh, how we conceive of nature as an aesthetic experience that I thought was a very interesting counterpart to the mission of architecture. And in many ways, it's a dialogue with nature, I think, uh, for most of its history. And so in our time, I think, uh, um, you know, we've had things like the computer appear, and you read certain uh, biologists, and they talk about things like the computational basis of our very flesh, and you hear physicists talking about how a black hole is basically just a giant quantum computer, and, you know, and it's it's interesting that there is a kind of question about uh, the mechanism behind uh, this pictorial nature that we know from landscape painting. And nature is not green, it turns out, and it's not trees and animals running around in the woods, but uh, it's also weird bacteria, it's Mars, you know, it's a fusion reactor that we call the sun, and this is all nature, and most importantly, we are nature too, you know, so uh, I think uh, the word nature has become deeply problematic, but uh, part of the problematic has uh, been defined by the emergence of uh, kind of a radicalization in our technologies that has brought into question the boundaries between uh, nature and architecture, you know. So, so I think this is kind of uh, more or less how I initially positioned uh, my work, uh, came to an understanding about what I was doing. It was driven by this uh, kind of uh, territory uh, at the intersection of architecture, nature, and technology. And a lot of things are becoming destabilized right now. And, and I think... Um, What's given clarity uh, to my investigation of uh, this intersection has been a uh, focus on the uh, aesthetic conditions uh, in between these categories. So uh, my position uh, to this point has primarily been uh, one of an aesthetic investigation. But aesthetic with a capital A, that's not really about uh, making something pretty, you know, but uh, it's a, a kind of a condition of uh, general perception of the outside world by us and, and that there are particularities in, you know, that problem. So uh, that's now moving, you know, it's, uh, it's beginning to move away from aesthetics but uh, regardless, uh, I think uh, my work will probably continue to hover in between these three polarities. And, yeah. Okay. All right. And um, so do you have a preferred design method, or what is it right now? Mm. Yeah. 
it, it's, uh, it will be difficult for me not to rant about methodology. You know, there's, uh, there's something about that word I really don't like. Uh, don't yeah. Don't. yeah. Yeah, and uh, in, in uh, something I wrote a few years back, um, I, I try to make a distinction between the word technique and the word methodology. Um, and the best way I could uh, restate that is, um, say, a technique is just some way to do something. You know, I paint a wall white, and I do that a lot. And all of a sudden, I'll have a kind of preferred technique of going left to right, or up to down, or so on, or doing it randomly. And you know, so the technique will inevitably emerge in anything that we do. You know, it's just a way to do something. Uh, methodology is different, and I like to give the example of uh, the Suzuki method of teaching the violin. And uh, uh, Suzuki uh, came up with this idea not really to teach the violin well. Uh, and the Suzuki method is uh, kind of infamous for never really having produced a virtuoso. You know, and uh, that's fine because that wasn't really the purpose. Uh, this is uh, not not known much. You know, it's associated more as a way to teach young children music. But what it actually was originally was uh, an ethic uh, of introducing beauty into the lives of children, Japanese children, following World War II. You know, so there was a kind of social good that was behind it. So the distinction between technique and methodology for me is uh, a methodology is not mere technique, even though the words, the two words seem quite in interchangeable. I don't think they are. A methodology is a kind of comprehensive system of techniques governed by a principle of why this way of doing it is the good way to do it. And that is the thing that bothers me quite a bit about methodology. Uh, I. Uh, believe more in a kind of uh, craft uh, ethic, I guess. Um, I like to give myself a kind of latitude to approach every new project differently and to do it differently. I'm, I'm extremely restless when it comes to technique, and uh, I, I, I can't, I can seldom do something twice. I, I just get so bored and uh, also uncomfortable just repeating something, you know, like a machine. So uh, I, I guess in some sense that is a kind of uh, craft. Uh, I, don't, I still don't know a better word than that, you know. Uh, I've been trying to find a better word than craft because I'm not really interested in hand work, you know, and, you know, art, artisanal, you know, making. I'm not interested in that at all. But what I am interested in craft and what that word signifies is that every making is a kind of a problem of a one of a kind. And uh, never for me is it a kind of uh, perfected production that's reliable, predictable, responsible. Uh, maybe I'm saying I'm. I don't want to be responsible for what I make, too. <laughs> but uh, when when people do uh, uh, criticize uh, my approach, I think uh, there is a kind of question about the ethics of, uh, you know, authorial production. You know, but I don't know. It's it's the only way I know how to do it. You know, and and I can't help but be restless. You know, and I'm not sure even why. And I tend to be like this, but. Uh, uh, I, th I think uh, uh, today in uh, schools, uh, you know, there's a kind of a real deep desire for a definitive method you know, because uh, so much has indeed become destabilized by digital technologies and it seems that it's only accelerating and it's not just about the computer but new materials, new structural systems, you name it, you know, new air conditioners and so on. And because uh, of all that's become unstable, I think um, there is a hunger to understand uh, the right way to do it. Uh, my, I see it in my students all the time, you know, they, I can see it in their eyes. They want me to just tell them, you know, what the right way to design is. And 
something that would guarantee success, and I'm afraid there is not, no such thing, you know. And, uh, but what's, what's funny about the enforcement of a methodology, you know, across a building culture and architectural culture is uh, there is a politics to it, and I think uh, that can't be ignored. So I think uh, whenever there is an emphasis on a particular method of design, one always has to question uh, what is the kind of uh, intent of using such a method. What is the proposition of the good there? You know, like my example of the Suzuki method. Uh, uh, I, I also uh, uh, like examples from you know jazz culture you know because uh what i love about uh the history of jazz in the 20th century in the united states is uh it's uh, a history of uh misappropriations and uh, the promiscuity of technique technique turning into other techniques and and um, kind of uh, profound expressions emerging out of uh what's in between fields, you know, and, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm very much a disciplinarian. I believe in an architectural discipline. There is one, but I'm very against the idea that there is a kind of absolute center of that, where we can orient uh, the kind of GPS of what is architecture. I don't think there is an absolute center at all. And um, the reason why I believe that is because I think the architectural discipline is largely defined by uh, experiments at the periphery. So perhaps uh, it's a kind of moving center. It's a migrate, constantly migrating center, and perhaps even a, an averaged center, you know. But 